Well, Chairman Brown and Ranking Member Scott, members of the committee, thank you for holding this hearing today on the Safe Banking Act. I got engaged in this issue some uh, eight years ago because of the problems created by the cash economy in cannabis. And from the beginning, it's been a bipartisan effort to undertake this, uh, this address these challenges. And a, a compliment uh, to Senator Cory Gardner, uh, former Senator Cory Gardner, who worked on this. And it's been a real pleasure to work with my colleague, uh, Steve Daines of Montana, as we seek to pursue solutions uh, to really the advancement of crime through a cash economy. And Chairman Brown, thank you for your partnership and for the collaboration that brought us to this moment today. Half of the states across our nation have some form of legalized cannabis. 37 states have legal cannabis for medicinal purposes and 21 have legal cannabis for recreational use. It's now an industry that supports 428,000 jobs. It counts for $25 billion in, in retail sales, so it's becoming a sizable industry. In my home state of Oregon, we had nearly a billion dollars in sales last year. And the taxes generated from those sales help fund our schools, mental health, substance abuse treatment programs, as well as law enforcement and city and county needs. But our federal law has not kept pace with Americans' changing attitudes towards cannabis nor with changing laws at the state and local level. And that failure has denied legitimate businesses the ability to access the same basic necessities as every other business, whether it's access to banking and credit card accounts, payroll services, and more, because depository institutions and credit unions are worried that they may be threatened with prosecution under federal law. And they have largely refused to work with this industry. So three quarters of the cannabis uh, economy operates entirely in cash. The few financial institutions that do work with cannabis businesses charge extraordinary fees because of the risk and the added layers of, of compliance. And the cash-only situation just trickles down far beyond the cannabis growers and the retailers. It proceeds to affect uh, all of the associated businesses, whether they're providing fertilizer or they're setting up greenhouses or they're selling seeds or in any other way uh, uh, connected. And many of them get thrown off their banking as a result of being a supplier uh, to the cannabis economy. It affects employees of these legal cannabis businesses who can't be paid by check or direct deposit. They have to walk around with wallets full of cash, worried that they'll be target for criminals on payday. Forcing legal businesses to operate in a cash economy is terrible for accountability, but it's great for crime. It has left these businesses and all that are connected to them open to violent crime, open to money laundering, employee theft, tax fraud, and more. And ranking member uh, uh, Scott, I wanted to mention, there is nothing like a cash economy to facilitate money laundering. The lack of electronic records in this world makes it really easy to move money that shouldn't be moved. And so it's a, a piece of the conversation I hope will come out as this bill is explored. Now there's no national database to compile the stats on incidents connected to these businesses, but we do have them for some states. Over the past 12 months, we've had 129 robberies of Oregon cannabis businesses. And we've seen that in state after state because the criminals know that since they're operating in cash, there's cash inside those stores, so they proceed to assault them. They know that the employees might be taking that, that cash out to, for transactions, so employees get assaulted. So whether it's the robberies, whether it's the assaults, whether it's the money laundering, all of it is bad news that we can address by passing this bill. If these businesses have the ability to accept debit cards and credit cards, use the same systems, pay their taxes and payrolls, all of those incentives for those crimes goes away. The Secure and Fair Enforcement Banking Act, or Safe Banking Act, that Senator Daines and I have introduced and led together would ensure legitimate businesses operating in compliance with state laws in those states where citizens have said they want this, so it's a state's rights issue, will have access to the same financial services as every other business. And I do wanted to mention that as, uh, as uh, uh, Senator Scott pointed out, we do have provisions here to address the issue of reputational risk being used against certain parts of the economy in an inappropriate way. So we're pleased to add that as a strengthening part of this bill. Financial institutions will be protected against prosecution or asset forfeiture, primarily for providing services to a state-sanctioned cannabis-related uh, business. 
To be clear, banks will not be forced to provide services to cannabis businesses. It is their choice. But if they provide that, they will have a safe space for the institutions and the industry. It explicitly extends that safe harbor to community development financial institutions that the chairman mentioned, minority depository institutions, MDIs, who serve underserved communities that have been disproportionately affected by cannabis enforcement in the past. After much consultation with colleagues and outside experts, this bill does include provisions to address concerns around equity and issues around law enforcement and money laundering raised in the memo by the Department of Justice last year. As a result, we have a piece of legislation that has significant bipartisan support, significant bicameral support. It's passed out of the House seven times. It is supported by people who believe the time has come to end the cash economy that hurts people in so many different ways. I'd like to submit into the record letters from current Oregon cannabis retailers sharing their own stories of the challenges and dangers facing them in this all-cash environment. 